The Office of the Prime Minister, OPM, officially launched the Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework, CRRF, in March 2017 to sustain its model approach to refugee management in the face of significant influx. Uganda's non-camp policy, combined with the rights and freedoms granted, provides refugees with some of the best prospects for dignity and self-reliance found anywhere in the world. We developed the current refugee policies uh, premised on the humanitarian nature of our people, people of Uganda. We always look at refugees as fellow human beings who are in distress, who are in trouble, who should be saved, who should be helped. The world recognizes our response to be the model response to be adapted internationally. And therefore, at the last World Conference of Refugees that took place at the UN, CRRF, or Comprehensive Refugee Response Framework, was adapted. The CRRF is a multi-stakeholder coordination model on refugee matters. The main aim of the CRRF in Uganda is to shift from a mainly humanitarian focus to development solutions for the long term for both refugees and host communities. This will lead to enhanced development in the refugee hosting districts and improved integrated service delivery for both refugees and host communities. We had the what we call the settlement transformation agenda. And the settlement transformation agenda had both the emergency response and the development nexus. And so CRF largely builds around that. It also builds around um, the inclusiveness, including the host communities in what we do. With the government of Uganda family in the lead, and with support from both humanitarian and development partners, the practical implementation of the CRRF has yielded tangible results towards the overall objective of protecting Uganda's asylum space, easing pressure on the host communities, and improving the lives of both refugees and their host communities. And I'm happy that our development partners, UNHCR, a World Food Program, and the others, have appreciated that we have to take care of both the refugees' interests, but also for the nationals. A multi-stakeholder CRRF steering group, co-chaired by the Office of the Prime Minister, OPM, and the Ministry of Local Government, with technical support from the CRRF Secretariat, oversees the practical application of the CRRF. So this steering group, we chair it, local government deputizes us, and we have donors, critical donors, represented in the steering committee. We have refugees having their voice in the steering committee for the first time because we just used to imagine that we knew what they wanted. The Refugee Engagement Forum, REF, represents the refugee voice in Uganda. Two seats on the steering group are reserved for refugees. The two representatives that sit on the steering group are elected democratically by the REF members. We are able to know what partners are doing, how they get the fundings, how these fundings are being channeled to us, what are the challenges that partners get in regard to reaching us, and we've also be able to give our feedbacks like what we felt should be done to the refugees from the experience as leaders in the settlements. Uganda is one of the largest refugee hosting country worldwide and the largest in Africa, with 1.2 million refugees as of February 2019. This is the highest number of refugees in the country's history. The number has multiplied four times. It's big. This is unprecedented. And therefore the pressure is higher. And what we have done is to develop programs that address the refugee response, and there are quite a number. So Dr. Deeb is the one where we do development. We have a very good model in Dr. Deeb. We don't do much at the center. Everything ticks in the local governments, in the communities where refugees are, in the host communities. The presence of large numbers of refugees 
has placed overwhelming demands on already stretched capacities and resources of the state and of the host communities, especially to cater for water, sanitation, health and education needs of the refugees and the Ugandans who are hosting them. To address these concerns, in September 2018, the Ministry of Education and Sports launched its Education Response Plan 2018-2021. This plan is the first of its kind worldwide. It will improve access to quality education for the half a million children and youth who live in refugee hosting areas, refugees and Ugandans alike. With education, we have a program now. We call Education Cannot Wait and I was so excited when that came to us. However, for us to do that, we've got to remember that instead of now going to the next village and putting up a new school, we need to expand on Barakara and really modernize it and really uh, make it a beautiful school and make it comprehensive, give it all the, the, the infrastructure it requires for the school it is and for the number it is taking. Uh, St. Luke is a community school and have a population of this one of 1,000. 895 children and the classroom which we have here is not enough for the children so all the partners are most welcome on 25th january 2019 the second sector plan the health sector integrated refugee response plan was launched this plan will provide improved health care for over 1.2 million refugees and more than 7 million ugandans at an overall cost of over 100 million us dollars per year most of these refugees, when they come, they come presenting some of the diseases that we are comfortably eradicated in our country. We can't block them because they are feared to be sick. What we can do is to make sure that we handle their cases. And the health plan is, for example, meant to expand health facilities in the districts that are hosting refugees and also bring personnel and, and, and the necessary uh, resources to make sure that health management is handled. In the management of uh, health, we don't discriminate whether you're a refugee or a host. Services are all equal. Momentum continues to ease pressure on refugee hosting districts and to foster local development. With the CRRF now, we, in, we have integrated planning. And the two, we are now trying to do what? Bring all these plans and fit them within the district development plans. We also are very much concerned about the environment. Because when the refugees come, we would clear large tracts of land for them to get allocations of plots. And that, when you are clearing land, you know what happens. Uganda is forested, so you are clearing not only the bush, but the trees. So there was a lot of environmental destruction, and it still goes on. The government of Uganda has put a lot of focus and emphasis on reforestation, environmental protection, reforestation. So we do seedlings, we do seedlings which we um, supply, we, we distribute to the, ref the homesteads, each homestead, to plant around their areas, to plant around the, the roads, to plant around their community. We had no access to, to clean water. Water were very far. Some points of water were not managed. At first, the borehole were not enough. People used to fight at the borehole because the water was not enough. We are very, very grateful for what they are doing to us. We are happy. One of the priority areas of the CRRF in Uganda is self-reliance of refugees and the host communities to empower them to be more productive members of the community for a sustainable future. The government of Uganda is developing a jobs and livelihoods response plan. These are significant steps towards social, cultural and economic inclusion and are laying the foundation for further refugee inclusion into Uganda's next national development plan. There are different people now from the people that came into our country. We are having an impact in their, in their lives, they are changing. In the training during this three months course, we don't realize whether you are Ugandan, whether you are Congo, whether you are what, so long that you are refugees, we train you. The first purpose is to impart skills, to make these people or the community self-reliant 
so that they can be able to uh, create jobs, to start up their own small, small jobs than seeking for jobs. My course, this tailoring will help me in my future because I've already now trained from here. I have to get something I start doing there at the host community. It is not enough for Uganda to be an island of peace. It is critical that we all live in a sea of peace and we can create that deliberately by our interventions. And those interventions must happen today. So my plea is for the inter international community to stand by us, stand with us in the refugee response, and not only in words, but in real action and followed by funding.